We're going to continue our examination of how to solve radical equations with the following two examples. So in this example five problem, we have the square root of x plus one minus the square root of x plus six plus one equals zero. Now we notice in this problem, we have two radicals and they're on the same side. And so the first instinct of some students is to say, well, I can just square the entire side. We can't do that because to square a three term expression is not as simple as just squaring the first term, squaring the second term, and squaring the third term. The square does not distribute across each term. This is a more complicated problem. Not only do we have our two radical expressions, we also have an integer, a constant on the outside, this plus one, we have to take in consideration as well. What you do is you move, if you have more than one radical with variables inside of them, you move them to separate sides. And so that's what I'm going to do first. I am going to move, and I'll move the negative one so it can become positive. I am going to move the square root of x plus six to the other side by adding it to both sides. And that's going to cancel it out here. And so I'm left with my original radical x plus one. And on the outside, a plus one equals the square root of x plus six. Now that we have radicals on both sides, we are going to square both sides. Now squaring the left side is gonna be a little more complicated. It's gonna involve a process because there's two terms. Squaring the right side is going to be easy because there's only one term inside of a radical and squaring the square root just cancels out. And so the right side is simple. It's just what was in the radical. It's just my x plus six. The left side, what we have to remember is what does it mean to square a binomial? That means you're multiplying it by itself. And so you have the square root of x plus one plus one times the square root of x plus one plus one and you distribute square root of x plus one times square root of x plus one while a radical times itself just cancels the radical so i'm left with x plus one square root of x plus one times one is a positive square root of x plus one one times the square root of x plus one is the same thing, a positive square root of x plus one. And then one times one is one. If we combine like terms, we have an x, we have a positive one and a positive one, so I'm gonna put a plus two at the end, and we have two of the same radicals. So it's x plus twice the square root of x plus one plus two. That is what it means to square this expression. It's more complicated. We have to actually write it out, distribute, put it all together. And so that is what's going to go on the right side. We have x plus twice the square root of x plus 1 plus 2. Now I notice I have on the left side and the right side both an x. So if I had to subtract an x from both sides to move this over, they're going to cancel out. So I'm just going to cross out the x's because they will cancel. So I'm only dealing with the equation twice the square root of x plus 1 plus 2 equals 6. And we've dealt with examples like this before in previous videos. The whole point is to isolate this radical. You cannot take anything outside of it until you square it, but you can't square it until it's isolated. So the first thing I'm going to do is subtract two from both sides. And that's going to give me twice the square root of x plus one equals four. Again, the radical is not isolated yet. I still have to divide both sides by two to get rid of that coefficient.
And so I have the square root of x plus 1 all by itself equals 2. So now that the radical is all by itself, I can go ahead and square both sides. And I'm left with x plus 1 equals 4. Subtract 1 from both sides, x equals 3. Now that is the answer I have at this moment. But what we know is I need to go back through and check my answer in case it is an extraneous solution. So over on the right-hand side, I'm going to go ahead and check my answer. I'm going to plug in 3 to it. So I have the square root of x plus 1. So I have the square root of 3 plus 1 minus the square root of x plus 6. So 3 plus 6 plus 1 should give me 0. Well, 3 plus 1 is 4, so I have the square root of 4. 3 plus 6 is 9, so the square root of 4 is 2. The square root of 9 is 3, so I have 2 minus 3 plus the 1 should equal 0, which is true, because 2 minus 3 is negative 1 plus 1 is 0. 0 does equal 0, so it's true. So I do have a solution of x equals 3. So this one was more complicated because the radicals were on the same side and there was a constant we had to take consideration. When you do this type of problem, do move the radicals on the opposite sides. However, be careful that when you are squaring two terms, actually write out what it means to square an object to multiply by itself and then distribute, combine like terms, and put it back in. Let's look at example six. We have the square root of x minus 12 equals 2 minus the square root of x. So we notice again we have two radicals. This time they're on separate sides. This radical is completely isolated and this has a constant attached to it. Well, we're going to have to square both sides. And just like before, one side is going to be easy to square. The other side is going to be a little more complicated. If the one with the two terms, we're going to have to actually do a process with. So squaring the square root of x minus 12, it just gives us x minus 12. And I'm going to write it down here to leave room for what it means to square 2 minus the square root of x. That means you're going to take it and multiply it by itself. So 2 times 2 is 4. 2 times negative square root of x is minus 2 square root of x. Negative square root of x times 2 is minus 2 square root of x. And negative square root of x times negative square root of x is a positive x. Now when we combine like terms, what we're going to get is 4 minus 4 square root of x plus x. And so now I have my equation, and I notice I have an x on the left side, a positive x on the left side, and a positive x on the right side. Those are going to cancel each other out right away. And the equation I will now be solving is negative 12 equals 4 minus 4 square root of x. So I would subtract 4 from both sides. And that's going to give me negative 16 equals negative 4 square root of x. I would divide both sides by the negative 4. And so I have negative 16 divided by negative 4. I'm going to do it to the other side so it cancels. So I get positive 4 equals the square root of x. Now that that radical is all by itself, it's completely isolated, I can square it to cancel out the square root. And so 4 squared is 16, so x equals 16. Before I say that's my answer, I need to make sure Before I say that's my answer, I need to make sure that it is true by checking it. And so I'm going to plug in x equals 16 into the problem. So I have square root of 16 minus 12. equals 2 minus the square root of 16. Well, 16 minus 12 is 4, so I have the square root of 4 equals 2 minus the square root of 16 
is 4. So the square root of 4 is 2. Does 2 equal negative 2? And that is false. And so what that means is x equals 16 is not a solution. It does not work. And so my final answer is no solution. That was my only option. It does not work. So there's no solution to the problem. So in this video, we focus on examples that actually involved squaring a binomial expression in order to eliminate the radical, the two radicals who are moved to opposite sides with a constant there that we had to take in consideration when squaring. So these are more complicated problems involving it. And you can move on when you understand this to the next two examples.